Okay, welcome back. And um, our guest is Honorable Abdurazak Namdas. He's former chair of the House Committee on the Army and is a, a board member of the NDDC. We've been looking at the nexus between uh, rampant insecurity and food production. He's been sharing his ideas, among which are that uh, we have to also uh, be a bit patient. And he's given you know, a pass mark so far to the Tinembu administration on this. Uh, we'll go on to, um, uh, as I said, when we come back, I'd like to know for him, what are, if you were to select two or three uh, aspects that um, we can look forward to in the short term of you know, making appreciable progress on, that is in the first 12 months. Uh, he was going to give us that, but not before I get um, Reverend Dominic, who has joined us uh, to contribute to the program. Good morning to you, Reverend. Good morning, Chief Yori. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Yori, I don't know if your guest can hear me. He's a member of National Assembly. I do a senator or have... A, a, a former member. Please go ahead, Reverend. Reverend. Please, sir. Please go ahead. Okay, please, distinguish, distinguish, senator. please, stop telling Nigerians to have patience. That language is progressive. Progressive in the sense that when you are telling us to have patience, we are not seeing you sign patience. As you come to the studio this morning, you come the police, you come with the police chief, you come with all the uh, uh, Reverend Dominic, I I'm so sorry. Um, your 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 sound uh, is not it's staccato. We can't hear you. It's like we hear one word and then the next three seconds it drops out. So very very sorry, Reverend Dominic. It's a poor connection. Uh, see if you can call in again. It might have cleared the line. But the one thing that I did hear you say uh, to the former chair of the House Committee on the Army in the uh, House of Representatives is that you are not uh, amused with his suggestion that um, we're going to have to be patient uh, a bit more, uh, which is what uh, Honorable Namda said uh, when he was assessing the first eight months of the Bola Tinumbu administration. So there you have it, Honorable. Uh, that viewer, he, I think he thinks that, are, are you not being insensitive in asking Nigerians to continue to be patient uh, against the outcry of, uh, we are hungry? Uh, I think, uh, I thank God that uh, the caller is, uh, you address him as a reverend. And uh, you see, when you say somebody is reverend, it's a man of God. No matter the situation you find yourself, uh, it is good that Patience is very important. And I'm not telling him just because <coughs> I am part of this government or not because the fact that I'm talking about President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. What I'm saying, we are talking about facts and reality. This government is eight months old. And I've told him, and I've told Nigerian people, that we have challenges. The president has agreed that there are challenges. But the point I, I'm making is that he is working towards addressing challenges. And I give an example. We have an issue of food security challenge. And the food insecurity, the government has said, okay, I have released grains. And these grains are meant to cushion the effects of people. That means an action has been taken. And therefore, we wait and see. In the area of security, reforms have been released. They are trying to procure equipment to fight banditry and what have you. The security agencies are doing their best. But I said, security equipment are not things you get on the shelf. Whether Reverend is very angry or not, if you make him today president, you make him whoever, whatever policy he will come out with, it will take time to germinate because it has to do some, go through some processes. And I'm saying the president is doing his best and has acted. What is wrong is when there is a challenge and the person has not lived up to the challenge and not taken up action in order to sort out the problem. But this president is sensitive to the issues and I say, look, even the challenge of uh, uh, dollar. Attempts have been made to see that, look, what can we do? Attempts have been put in place to see that we have to bring back the value of Naira back. So these are things that government has taken up to do. And I think Reverend, as it is, is so tight, is a man of God. If I say Nigeria should be patient, I am not saying anything wrong. All right. Um, uh, well, you, you are emphasizing that 
people need to pay attention to the gestation period. Uh, you're saying that that is the way of nature anyway. Hardly do you pronounce the thing, and instantly, within that split second, it becomes uh, what is desired. I hear you. Let's hear it from Mr. George, who has called in from Ikeja. Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uncle Yori, uh, there can be no food production, you know, when there is insecurity in the farms where the foods are produced. The government needs to tackle insecurity more seriously. And I mean the word, more seriously. I think it's about time the president should call the CGN for a chat about the prosecution of criminals. Why am I saying this, Uncle Yori? Okay. Within the past one month, the police said just yesterday that they have arrested more than 1,000 kidnappers and other criminals within the Abuja territory alone. And we know that the security agencies have been trying in other states arresting some, some of them. You, you, you could argue that they are not doing enough, but they have at least arrested some. Those ones they have arrested, apart from the police coming out to show them to the public on television, show me one, one of them that has been, uh, you know, given sad justice. They punished according to the laws of the land. If you don't do that, that illicit trade will thrive more. That is why more and more people are going into it. They have not seen examples of people who did it and were punished. So if I were the uh, president, it is time to call the CGN that the, the judiciary was not set up alone for uh, election petitions. When election petitions come, they will just set aside all other criminal cases. No one single, I, I stand to be corrected, no one single bandit or kidnapper has been jailed since this issue became, uh, came to the, uh, you know, to, to, to the limelight in Nigeria. So it's not going to be like that. All right. When we take that one serious, other things will follow. Okay. The second reason why food production will be in short supply is the rise in fuel price. Because it is, it is petrol that the transporters use to bring this food stuff to the city centers. If that is also addressed, it will ameliorate the situation. I had suggested before that the government should give crude oil yes. at a reduced price to Dangote refinery and the Kodako refinery that is coming up now. From the 400,000 barrels per day that was earmarked for local consumption, they should be, if that is given to, uh, uh, to the refineries to, you know, to refine, for local consumption at a reduced rate, you will see that the rate of the fuel price of fuel price go down, and it will also affect transportation. If we if we are serious to address this food insecurity, that is the way to go. Thank Th you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. George. Um, Honourable, uh, you, you, your your yes. your your, your I, thoughts on those suggestions. I, 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 I quite agree with him on some issues. For example, he has made a very important statement that government should do more in the area of uh, security because prices of food are, have gone up because uh, people are not allowed to go to their farms and produce foods. And that is actually true. And, but government, that's what I said, government is doing its best as far as I am concerned. However, the challenge we have faced also with this issue of rising prices of food is that our businessmen have been given access or opportunity to do what they like. If you go to the towns, you see a lot of warehouses, mighty, mighty warehouses, that businessmen also have this idea of holding this food so that they can, until the thing multiplies to two towns, if a, if a bag of rice is is, is at 10,000, 10, the man will hold it until it is 60 to 80,000 before he releases it to the market. Where government has its own challenge, the people in businesses are also having their own challenges. So I think government, in my view, should also look forward to 
allow security people agencies to go and check those with mighty mighty uh, uh, warehouses who have decided to hold food and waiting for the time it increases before they sell it to the Nigerian people. I am not saying you should not make profit. You have to be in business to make profit. But however, trying to hold good for a long period of time just because you, you are a private individual, I think is not good enough. Where government has its challenge, it, the people also have their own challenge as far as I'm concerned. So that is why I said it is important for government to, to put up a machinery to ensure that people who hold this, uh, this good for the purposes of making profit should be dealt with. They should be allowed to release those grains and then sell it at an appropriate price. So once the grain is released from government reserve, yes. I, I beg your pardon, but right. if I have the opportunity, I'll pick up on some of the issues that um, you haven't uh, got around to in uh, Mr. George's uh, uh, question. Uh, uh, for, for instance, including the whole matter of accountability. How uh, have, have the people seen, uh, some of the people that have been reported to have been apprehended, have people seen them come to justice? Has justice been served? Is it being seen? No, now, this... let me tell you. Let me tell you. But, yes. but before you go there, sir, I don't, I, I'm so sorry, sir, uh, because uh, Ada in Joss is standing by. You can mop it up along if possible. Good morning, Ada in Joss. Good morning, Mr. Yori. If I don't call him from Joss, as we say, can you hear me? We can, we can. Okay, yes, and then I'm, I'm, I'm sending my greetings also to Honorable Abdul Azad Namda. It's really unfortunate, you know. And I can see how he's battling to try, try and kind of defend and explain, you know. But the problem is this, Mr. Yuri. The problem is uh, there are threefold. One is, um, the major one is insecurity. Yes, the government is doing the more they can, but the National Assembly, the tenth one now, they should do something about saving way for state police. So the police, we can have effective community policing. In most times, are uh, local, you know. That is what is the, that is the gap there. So that they, it has, I mean, the, the, the army has been overstretched. The army should be at the border, you know, or even whether it's interstate border or whether it's a major border. Okay. But not, uh, uh, you know, it's staying within the state. You know, that, that should not be the case. That's why we're not getting it right. The other one is, um, this well, most of the hike, hiking price of food stuff is revolves around swell. So let the president find a way of that particular, particular uh, the father is the point that is uh, on. They say they are doing testing or whatever. Let him do what he can. And he's that one, that police. Then they don't let them give him enough food. You know, so that he won't be a fucking fool in the international market. So oh. he can now, uh, I mean, uh, 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 kind of uh, refine too here. So that the, the, the full price of fuel, if it doesn't come down and it's not within the range of 200 plus, this uh, hike will continue. Then the last one, before I got the line, I heard the, uh, this uh, to talk about, because I have this in what I got it down. Yesterday, I saw in the warehouses, so many warehouses, with a lot of food, all dead. And then when the agencies that were sent, because from recent blowers, uh, blow uh, you know, like that, they went there, they showed it. Uh, I don't you know whether you are hearing her thing. very well, because See, that, she is now, breaking wow. all through. So I they can't now said that they have a world, uh, whatever food intervention that they are waiting for. And All they right. told them to be keeping those who talking to them when, when that time comes. They now, so they now kill them up and said, okay, they are investigating it. And they now know what to do next, if it is true. You know, it's really close. And I will be coming here, and then you're talking about what, whatever to break to whatever, wherever. You know, that's what is the issue. And Thank you very much, Ada. I, I, we got your point. Thank you very much, ma'am, for uh, calling in. She actually brought, uh, you were saying, uh, Honorable Namdas, that um, it was breaking, but she brought back some of the points that you hadn't really touched upon, in particular, the hike in the price of fuel, that as long as the fuel situation was the way it was, we wouldn't see appreciable, an appreciable change in the situation, among other things. But you were going to start with... Um, the, the part that Mr. George has said, where is the accountability being dis displayed that um, the, yes. the judiciary is working side by side with the president's objectives? Yes, uh, first, let me agree with him on the fact that the judiciary has always been, uh, it takes time to find justice in this country. Uh, I, let me agree on, with him on that. But I must also, to, but to say, that justice has not been served completely, I think it's not very true. Uh, people are always listening to high-profile cases alone. Uh, there is no way 
whether you are in Lagos, you are in the uh, in Jordan or uh, Kaduna or uh, in Adama or whatever you, there's no way you say people that are arrested have not been tried for anything. What is going government going to benefit from that? But let us agree that justice justice system should be enhanced. There should be quick delivery of justice. But to make a blanket statement that of all over the months that nobody has been prosecuted. That is a blanket statement that would not be no, good to be said. I don't think anybody ever. is saying that, sir. I, I don't think anybody is saying yes. that, sir. It's just that we haven't but, had the number that would indicate that there's a lot of activity in that area uh, such that Yeah, I agree every... with you. That's why I said I, I agree with him that there is delay in serving justice. And I also join him to say that there is need for us to have to fast track justice system. Uh, just like in the case of electoral uh, matters, where days are being uh, marked, and that's why justices okay. will move to serve justice. And uh, I agree Oops. with him on that. I okay. agree Both with him on George that. and Adas also spoke about the need to fix the fuel price hike. Um, is there any hope in that direction? Because you bring down the cost of transportation, it's going to impact, you know, uh, the, the price of food ultimately. Yeah, I, I agree that uh, the message is that people are talking about uh, subsidy being removed. That is the general thing I try to understand. Uh, if you remove uh, the price, prices of uh, fuel has increased as a result of the removal of subsidy, that is something to say. But to say, okay. you see, that was why I said we also need to be patient. However, okay. the government is making effort and is conscious of the fact that, uh, they, that there is need to reduce the prices of uh, fuel in the country. Oh, okay. Uh, Prince Balogu in Ojodu Burger. Good morning, sir. Uh, Prince Balogu, if you're there. No, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Please go ahead. Yes, good morning, Uncle Yari. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Go ahead quickly, please. Um, uh, thanks for bringing uh, our honorable family this morning. Yes, sir. But, uh, on the only, people, people are getting angry about this insecurity and the food matter. The, our other honorable said the people should hold patience. They should hold patience. They should be killing off in dozen, time to time. They have security. We don't have. It's only God that is protecting us. He said that they should hold patience. No uh, food matter is rising day by day, day by day. People are hungry. Okay, okay. Anger is slowing, you know. Anger. Anger is slowing. Anger is slowing. And you know when people are being pushed, pushed, we are not in Iraq. How can terrorists or bandits be more powerful than government in a the, in the same country? How okay. can? Okay. Yeah. How can you can't move freely again? Uh, I, I, you understand what I'm saying? Indeed, I do, Prince. And uh, all the Nigerian viewers understand what you are expressing uh, the frustration of it that has been going on for so long. But you've heard from Honorable um, Namdas that, look, there is going to be a need for patience. Uh, much as that is not desired, desired to be heard at the moment. Uh, asking a hungry man to be patient is a bit difficult to be patient with hunger. Uh, so I, I won't, you know, uh, take you further on that, Honorable Namdas. I think you've spoken about that. But you are also a former chair uh, uh, of the, um, what, uh, you, sorry, you're also a board member of the NDDC, Niger Delta Development Commission. Um, so what, are the, what, 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 what is the NDDC going to do differently this time? Because I did want to touch on that before we go. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, presently, the board of the NDC as is constituted, uh, I think we are going to make the difference. Because part of, while I was in the House of Representatives, uh, I was a member of the NDDC committee. So I know how the NDDC thing worked. Uh, the challenge has always been that there is always crisis between the management and board members. Uh, once there is this crisis, there will be no, people will not be on the same page and it will hamper us development and interventions in the Niger Delta. But this very board, we are aware of our, we are aware of 
the laws section of the NDDC. The NDDC is 24 years old. It was the, the ad was enacted in 2000 and up to this day. We know as a lawmaker, I know that I am a part-time board member. I am not full-time, not executive. So even the chairman knows that. And therefore, we, the current group of uh, current uh, board members, are not ready to have any crisis with the management team because the people of Niger Delta are in dire need of interventions. They are in dire need of environmental changes. So we cannot allow people to have different uh, crises in order for, uh, for us not to give development. So we can do that. Okay, I can let, assure let, you that let, let, there's going to be a departure. I, I hear you. So sorry to interrupt you, but I, I'm fast running out of time. And the East-West Road, which goes back to the Obasanjo administration, is it ever going to be completed? Is uh, one of the questions. But I do have a, uh, another viewer in Abe, in Abe Kuta, I believe, who wants to join us. Uh, good morning to you, sir. I didn't catch the name. Uh, Mr. Babatunde in Abe Kuta, if I got that right. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for calling in. Quickly, please, yeah, go good ahead. Good morning. This is Shubai Babatunde once again. Go uh, ahead, please. Thank you for this. Uh, educating and brilliant program that you just put together, sir. sir uh, I want to ask, uh, because the Honorable said the, the Nigerian citizens should exercise patience for them that things will get better. I want to ask, he when, sir, because we have been exercising patience from 1999. He, he said now, short, term. short term, you all 12 know, months. You all know the Honorable. You have security that is guiding you up and down. How many security, how many security do we have to guide the citizens? Eh? Okay. I want you to answer that question. Again, uh, sir. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Just the one question. Um, he was saying that, are you sure that those who are in office in this country are, are sensitive, uh, can actually identify with the ordinary man on the street? Uh, but the way that came out is that you, no doubt, have uh, your own you know, security and all of that. Where is the security of the ordinary man? But the East-West Road, from the Abbasanjo era, is that ever going to get completed? I think uh, on the matter of East West, uh, West Road, let us be aware that the government of Ahmed Bolatinubo has already released the sum of three billion to thirty-three billion, sorry, thirty-three billion to a contractor. In fact, the Minister of Works, David Omahi, has made it clear when he went for inspection of that road with the members of National Assembly from River State. He have to order the stoppage because he felt that they have released so much money and the contractor is not working according to expectation. So that means action has already been taken. That is why I was telling people that we have to be patient. For instance, in the issue of East-West Road, now if monies have been released. The contractor has not done that good job. And that's what the minister has said. Stop work. Let's see. Come back to the table. What I asked you to do, I needed a river sharp sand. You have not provided a river sharp sand. So what is the problem? What did you do with the money? And I feel that you are moving at a slight pace. So these are actions that have been taken by government. That was why I said, kindly be patient because action has been taken. Road construction, no matter how urgent you need it, you cannot do it in three months or in four months. Insecurity, no matter how urgent it, the equipments that will pursue bandits cannot arrive in the country in two weeks or in three weeks. That was what I was saying. What importantly is that we action has been taken in this regard. And I, am, I plead with Nigerians to be patient. To, they should exercise pressure also with me when I tell them that. I feel their pain. I'm also a Nigerian. And let us not forget, I am not a serving member of House of Representatives. At least, because I can see how when they say honorable, honorable, people feel that I am still a member of the National Assembly. I feel the same pain. Uh, we are Nigerians. I cannot right. be insensitive to what people are feeling. Thank you so much. So that's a fine place to leave it. Honorable uh, Abdul Razak uh, Namdas, uh, former chair, House Committee on yes. the Army, and board member of NDDC. Uh, thank you very much for your time this morning. And that's where we're going to have to leave it. That's our program today. Do please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folarin. Bye-bye for now.